So I'm just going to finish this section off before I start talking a little bit about pacing with the model that was proposed in the thesis. And this was a paper published earlier this year in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. So, before exercise, the first thing you know, 99% time, is the known endpoint of the exercise bike. So you know how far it is. Is it a 10 k race? Is it a marathon? Is it a 50 km cycle race? Whatever the case is. Then there are physiological inputs before you start. The signals from muscle glycogen. Have you carbo loaded or are you starting the race in a depleted state? What is your skin temperature? Because that tells you whether it's hot or cold today. What is the oxygen level of the ambient air? Then there's an expected distance or duration, which is only there because you have prior experience. If you have to do a 21 kilometer run with no experience, you cannot anticipate how long it's going to take. So that's where training starts to modulate it, as well as in the form of motivation and external competition. So what is that state here and who am I running against? What happens then is that an initial exercise intensity is set. So you start off on the sporting event, but let's call it the Chicago Marathon, at a certain pace. Now that is the anticipatory setting of pacing, and it can only be done based on previous experience. The most obvious example of this is if I tell you to run 100 meters compared to running a marathon, within two steps you are running at different speeds. Now how do you know it? how to set that intensity? That's a decision made by higher cognitive processes as a result of those inputs. What happens now, and this was a, a conceptual proposal, this is a, a, call it a philosophical, for want of a better word, construct, which we call the template for RPE. So the body knows how far you have to go, and it also knows that there is an acceptable rate at which the perception of effort will be allowed to increase. If the perception of effort goes up too quickly too soon, then it would be deemed unacceptable. So how, what is it being compared to? And the answer is it's being compared to this template. That's what we came up with as a concept. The initial exercise intensity causes a number of physiological changes in these homeostats. So again, ATP depletion, phosphate accumulation, lactate accumulation, pH changes, uh, desaturation of the hemoglobin, body temperature goes up, use of glycogen, mechanoreceptors from the muscle, to name a few. Those physiological changes or homeostats feed back to the brain in the form of absolute feedback, which is then used to generate a perception of effort. How do I feel? Now that perception of effort we often don't understand where it comes from. Sometimes you'll feel bad because you know you're hot or you know you're thirsty or you know your muscles are sore. But oftentimes you don't. But it's a, it's a kind of a collection of all these physiological inputs to form a conscious perception of effort, which is then interpreted in the context of how much exercise, of, uh, how much of the exercise bar remains. So you may feel absolutely terrible, but it would be acceptable to you if you were one kilometer from the finish line. Whereas if you were 50 kilometers from the finish line, then it seemed unacceptable. So that, that perception of effort can only be interpreted using exercise duration remaining as an anchor point and by comparing it to some pre-exercise anticipated RPE, which is where the template comes in. So that, that's the model for how we pace ourselves, pretty much. And it's by slowing down that we ensure the conscious RPE is matched to the template RPE throughout exercise and that is achieved, of course, by modifying the work. 